BPPV is the most common cause of vertigo. The vertigo it causes is a sensation of rotation in space when your head is in certain positions. Typically these positions include laying down to go to sleep, rolling in bed, sitting up, and bending down. The vertigo of BPPV is brief, lasting less than a minute, for reasons that will be discussed in this video. The problem begins in an area of the inner ear called the utricle, shown by the red arrow. Benign paroxysmal positional vertigo is caused by loose calcium crystals, or otoconia, that become detached from the utricle. Once detached, they may tumble into one or more of the semicircular canals. The reason why the otoconia, shown by the blue arrow, get free from the jelly in which they are normally held to the sensory cells, the red arrow, may not be determined in many cases. In most patients, it's probably due to head trauma, even in the distant past. Other causes include viruses that may attack the ear, Meniere's syndrome, or the effects of aging on the ear. Loose particles in the inner ear may fall into the semicircular canals. If they happen to fall into the horizontal and superior canals, they tend to come out within a short time during normal activities. However, when they get into the posterior semicircular canal, they tend to remain longer because the posterior canal is sealed at the bottom. The test for BPPV is simple and part of the examination of every patient complaining of dizziness. Shown here, the test is done by laying the patient down with the head to one side and observing for the twitching movements of the eyes called nystagmus. If particles are present in the semicircular canal, they begin to move as the head tilts. Movement of the particles tugs on the sail-like cupula and triggers a feeling of spinning as well as flickering movements of the eyes called nystagmus that typically lasts as long as the particles are in motion. When the particles stop moving, the spinning sensation and nystagmus stops as well. These are the eye movements characteristic of BPPV. Look carefully at the blood vessels on the eye and you'll see the eye rotate with quick little clockwise movements. As the particles come to rest, the eye movements slow, then stop, and the feeling of vertigo resolves. The treatment for most cases of BPPV is usually simple and involves rotating the head through a series of positions to lead the loose particles out of the semicircular canal and back into the utricle from which they came. Although one treatment may be successful, multiple treatments may be needed in some cases. 10 to 25 percent of patients with BPPV will have multiple episodes of this form of vertigo despite successful repositioning. Your doctor may teach you how to do the maneuver during your office treatment, since recurrences of the condition are so common. This should only be done at home when the affected ear has been confirmed. The picture shows treatment of the right ear. The process is reversed for the left. Patients should only tempt this after being cleared by their doctor. Another therapy called the brandt daroff maneuvers may be prescribed for patients to do at home in cases resistant to particle repositioning. In cases where office treatment is not easily or safely done, such as in patients with limited mobility, a computer-driven device called the Omniax may be used. The Omniax may also be used in cases that have not been successfully treated in the office chair. Some of the do's and don'ts after office treatment of BPPV include use reasonable caution when driving. If you are unsure, have someone else drive. Avoid heights until you are sure you are safe. Use handrails when you can, and be careful in the shower where the rushing water can be disorienting when you are not sure of your balance. It is not unusual to have mild feelings of dizziness after treatment. Remember, the particles that cause BPPV are a normal part of the balance system. When the particles are returned to the part of the ear where they came from, they can move in unusual ways and give the sense of tilting or swaying. Adjust your activities accordingly. If you have more intense vertigo, please call our office. Sleeping with the head slightly elevated on two to three pillows or in a reclining chair for the first 48 hours after treatment may help the particles stay in the part of the ear where they belong 
and either stick to the utricle or be reabsorbed by the inner ear fluids. For the rare cases of BPPV that don't resolve with office treatment, surgery may be offered. Surgery is elective and should only be done when symptoms have continued so long or recur so frequently that normal activities are significantly disrupted. Obstructing the canal prevents particles from entering the canal from the utricle and prevents movement of the sail-like cupula of the semicircular canal. Semicircular canal occlusion rarely fails to stop BPPV in the operated ear, but it does have risks. While the risk that the operation may not stop the attacks of vertigo is slight, BPPV may occur in the opposite ear. In very rare cases, occlusion of the posterior canals on both sides is done, but never at the same time. More of concern is the small risk to hearing. Although reported to occur in up to 10% of cases, Hearing loss in the hands of surgeons who do this and other ear operations regularly is quite rare. When it occurs, however, hearing loss may be total and permanent. Dizziness is common in patients undergoing the surgery for 48 to 72 hours after the operation and is the main reason surgical patients are hospitalized two to three days after surgery. In some patients, the inner ear reacts strongly to the surgery and dizziness is more severe and prolonged. Steroids are sometimes used after surgery to reduce inner ear inflammation. Infection and bleeding are rare complications of this surgery. Medications, such as meclizine, are not effective treatment for BPPV. While medication may reduce the nausea induced in some patients by vertigo, the particles in the semicircular canal are not affected by the medication. BPPV only resolves when the particles are returned to the part of the ear from which they originate or are immobilized by surgery. Can BPPV go away by itself? Yes, the condition frequently resolves on its own. This probably happens in many people who, through normal day or nighttime activities, such as rolling in bed while asleep, move the particles through their inner ear, out of the posterior canal, and back to the part of the inner ear where they originate. BPPV is more common as we age, but can occur at any age following head trauma. The Epley Omniacs, designed by John Epley, who originally described the particle repositioning maneuver, is a special computer-driven chair available at the Michigan Ear Institute. The Omniacs allows precise treatment of BPPV and is especially useful for patients whose dizziness has persisted despite conventional office treatment or patients with mobility limitations. The signs of BPPV are usually unmistakable by experienced physicians. Additional testing, such as MRI or inner ear balance testing, may be done if there is some doubt of the diagnosis or if the symptoms or signs persist despite careful treatment in the office or with the omniacs. In rare cases, conditions involving the brain or the connections of the inner ear to the brain may have symptoms similar to BPPV. In rare cases, the particles that cause BPPV get jammed up against the cupula, causing prolonged vertigo and nystagmus. This is a condition that can be recognized and treated by an experienced ear physician. In the vast majority of patients, the real sense of spinning lasts less than one minute, although there may be feelings of unsteadiness between spells of spinning. In conclusion, BPPV is a condition that will affect many, if not most people, at some point in their life. While disruptive, it is only rarely disabling and is almost always treatable through office treatment or surgery.